In today's lesson, I'm going to look about representations of place and we're going to look at it from a formal uh, and informal representation approach. This comes in the OCR A-Level uh, 2.B spec, um, bit of the specification, which I've highlighted here. So I'm going to look at informal representations of place. Uh, this could be anything from a poem, a piece of artwork, um, a film. It can also be a photograph like this one of London. Uh, one thing about we need to know about informal representations is they don't always have to represent reality. So this, this is an abstract painting of um, Big Ben. It doesn't actually look like that. It's someone's interpretation of it. And so um, informal representations don't actually have to look exactly like they are in reality. But they do give us a very specific view. So they give us the geographical context, um, and especially give us an impression of the sights and sounds of a place. Um, which um, formal representations don't always do. Here's some examples of some informal representations of uh, London. We've got Notting Hill, which is a film. We've got 28 um, Days Later, again, a horror film um, showing London there. Books, um, and also Lily Allen wrote a song called London. It shows us that informal representations can be uh, very diverse. They, they don't have to be made by an expert, they can maybe pretty much anyone, and they can come in a whole variety of different media. So the lyrics of Lily Allen's songs talk about growing up in London, while Notting Hill shows us a very specific area of London and the kind of the lives of kind of the middle class um, people living in there. The interesting thing is that here's an example um, of Attack the Block, which is another film set in kind of South London. It's a completely different uh, representation of London. It, it's again, it's an informal representation. And the interesting thing about informal representations is that, that they are subjective. That means um, Notting Hill was the vision of a, a director called Richard Curtis, and um, Joe Cornish was the director who made. Um, attack the block. These are kind of these individuals' understanding of this place and therefore it, how they perceive the place and how they re represent it will be affected by their age, by their gender, by their education, by their background. So we need to understand that kind of informal representations have some sub subjectivity to them. It depends on um, who is making the representation. Last thing to really note about informal representations is, as you can see in all of these, they're often made by smaller groups. So it can maybe be by someone who goes out and writes a blog about a place. Like I said, you don't have to be an expert. It's normally unofficial um, small groups or individuals that do that. I'm going to move on to formal representations of place. So these are more official uh, sources of information. Um, it's largely based on collecting lots of data and s statistics. So here are some informal representations of the city of LA. We've got Straight Out of Compton, Boys in the Hood, and Beverly Hills Cop. They all talk about different areas of um, uh, Los Angeles. Um, and in, in, the, in these pictures, you could say that we could see a common thread potentially that they're kind of all people with ethnic minorities they all look like areas that are kind of got crime rates in them but that only tells me kind of the views of the people that have made these films here is some actual um, formal representation this is official data that's collected in the census this actually tells me how much people earn in terms of per capita income it tells me about how many people are below the poverty line so the formal representations they often are more objective. So they, they use stats and they often get data from multiple sources, which means they're more authentic. It's also the fact is that official um, uh, kind of formal representations are normally not created by individuals. So they will be created by larger organisations, things like governments, educational uh, organisations. So formal representations are normally conducted by official organisations. And one of the ways, a really obvious way that we can do formal representations of place is the census. Census is uh, where we collect information about uh, a population. Um, it's taken every 10 years in the UK, uh, which means with official and formal representations of place like the census, we can see a trend over time. It also gives us a variety, a broad um, scale of information. It tells us information about education, health, religion, 
gender and the ethnicity of a population. Therefore, we're looking at a much broader picture of this place than just one small view. So the good thing about kind of formal representations of place is that they cannot be located on maps. Um, here's an example where information about kind of the deprivation of people has been located on a map and we can then see the patterns and we can allocate resources um, to meet those. It also means that we can look at it at a larger scale. So a formal representation, because it's taken officially by the government, I can look at it at a national scale, so I can compare um, households across a whole country, but I can also look at it down to a local scale. So the census data is collected at this household level, um, which means we look at kind of individual households and, and look at them in income and health and education. But then I can compare that all the other houses in that area, all the houses in that region and that nation. Some of the ways that census uh, data is collected in terms of areas. So we've got something called the output area. That's the smallest size we can get. And that's kind of an area that counts uh, an average size of about 300 people. Lower layer support area is bigger with nearly 1,500 people. And then up to middle layer support um, output layer, which is uh, close to 7,500 people. It shows you that I can look and apply um, my kind of formal representations to a map and look at it, therefore, at different levels. So it's much better for looking at a variety of scales than an informal representation. Last thing to really uh, consider before we look at pros and cons is geospatial data. So that, that essentially means um, where there is a location um, uh, that has had data applied to it. Uh, so it, the most obvious example of this would be Google Earth. So we have data about all the stuff that's there, but then we apply it to a map, um, give it a location. So we're applying um, geographic information systems to an actual um, map location, and therefore we can get coordinates and roadmaps. So being able to compare maps, um, being able to co compare coordinates, postcodes is a really good example of geospatial data. So I'm going to quickly just recap the benefits of um, each of the approaches and why maybe informal might be better than formal at times. Informal gives us multiple perspectives. It's very diverse. It gives us the sights and sounds of a place, but it also can zoom in and show us detail and maybe zoom out slightly and show us a wider context. But it's often used at a local scale um, and it shows a kind of uh, variety. You can look at it from different points of view and get different opinions. Formal is accurate and factual. Use stats. Um, it comes from official sources like the government, so we can trust it. Um, it gives you often lots of bits of data, so that means you can get a, a wider picture than that specific view of informal. You, you know, you can track changes over time because things like the census are collected every 10 years, so I can look at how ethnicity changes over 10 years. And like I said, we can look at it at the larger scale of the national and then still go down to that household level and look at it at a household level. So a variety of scales are available with form. Last thing I could say is that we can compare places much easily because I can look at the, you know, the stats for educational output in one area like we did in Toxdef, and then compare that with stats from another area like Limpston, which means it's easier to, to make um, comparisons and, and see trends between places. There are also problems to both approaches. Informal is obviously more subjective. It depends on the person giving the representation. It doesn't therefore have that balance, and so you could purposely misrepresent a place to maybe have, uh, give across your own agenda, um, so it doesn't have the balance of formal. And like I said, it's often at a smaller scale. Um, it could be a street level, could be a, a kind of a, a part of a city, um, but often it's not going to look at a national kind of picture. Formal doesn't actually show us really how people li live their lives. It kind of is very objective. It shows us basically people as numbers, um, and therefore we can't actually see uh, what it's like to live in an area. Um, sometimes it relies a lot on the data being perfect, um, and so assuming that these kind of surveys are completely done true when um, some people don't always do that. Example was in the 2011 uh, census when nearly 175,000 people claimed that their religion was a Jedi, Jedi Knight, which is from the Star Wars franchise. 
Last thing is, it, like I said, it doesn't show us really what that place sounds and looks like or how people feel about it. So there are both pros and cons to both approaches. Um, and it's interesting, it will affect how we represent a place is how people will perceive it.